Hello all of you. This is Vandita Sarda from Actuate Educational Institute. And today we are going to begin the topic data analysis and interpretation. So what is data first of all? Data is any information that is provided to you. It can be regarding anything absolutely beginning from what you have done in your day. The number of steps you have walked that is also data or for a big corporate the number of sales over the past 10 years they have done all of this is nothing but data but you all must be thinking that data can be of so much variety and it is basically just numbers or pieces of information so what do we do with it all of us know that in today's world data has become a very big word especially big data because everything and anything seems to be working only on the basis of data so how do they actually use the data because no one can do anything with just numbers. So because of this, it is important that data analysis and interpretation is known by all of us. And this is also a very big reason why this is a common section across all aptitude examinations, across all finance based examinations. And it is now a skill that everyone should have. So data is basically information in a little organized manner. And now, when you have the data, there are different ways of representing it. So for example, if I take the data of the number of steps you have walked. Okay, so today, suppose let's say we walked 4000 steps. Yesterday, you walked 3500 steps. Tomorrow, maybe you will be walking 7000 steps. So why do we need this data? What will you do with this data? You will see how many steps you are being able to cover maybe because of your fitness maybe the doctor has prescribed you that you must walk these many steps maybe you want to see if your day was very tiring then you can see how many steps did I walk for different reasons you can require this data maybe you have a fitness goal to achieve you want to see how much steps, is in, steps are increasing day by day so here you saw that between yesterday and today 500 steps more you walked between today and tomorrow, you have walked 3000 more steps, right? So just by looking at the numbers here, there are just three numbers. So you can easily decide uh, what exactly is the increase or decrease. However, when you have the data for, let's say 365 days for an entire year, if you collect your data of the number of steps walked, then it will be difficult for you to analyze your growth, your the number of steps why would you walk a decent number of steps on a particular day and on some days maybe let's say if it's a Sunday you are having a lazy day then maybe you will be walking a little less number of steps on a very exhaustive work day you will walk more number of steps so to analyze all this it is important that we present the data in a suitable format so there are different ways which we will be dealing with all of which are just ways of presenting the same data depending on the requirement depending on the audience now of course there will be some extremely complicated data forms which are understood only by experts or maybe people who actually have proper knowledge of this field however for a layman they, you cannot use just any form of data presentation you have to use a form of presentation that is easier to understand so the first one which we will be dealing with is the most basic one data table and today we will also be dealing with pie charts apart from this we have bar charts we have line charts Venn diagram and Inside these also there are some subtypes of charts. For example, in a bar chart you can have a clustered column chart. Or you can have a stacked bar chart. In a line chart you can have line width markers. Or you can have one which only shows the trend right so there are innumerable number of charts that can be made but we will be de dealing with the most basic ones whose knowledge will equip you that you can understand any sort of chart presented to you 
so for today's class we will only be concentrating on these two so let's start with data table data table is nothing but it's just like any normal table that is presented to you and you will have rows rows are these and they it will have columns the vertical ones are the columns and the horizontal one are the rows and then in those rows and columns there will be different headings row heading column heading and inside that you will find different values which is actually the data that you have to work with so first we will move on to question number 10 we'll begin with question number 10 and we'll see exactly how a data table looks so as you can see these are my rows and these are my columns now when you are faced with a data table there are some things which you have to notice and make sure that you are careful about those things from the very beginning so what are these things first of all you have to see what data is the table showing you so over here the heading of the table food grains production in a country in 1999 so the heading of the table tells you exactly what the data is about so we know over here this table shows us the food grains production in a country in the year 1999 another very important thing is the units over here it's lakh tons say for example if you are asked a question wherein you will be you have the options in kgs so first what you have to do is you have to make sure that you are converting these lakh tons to kg and then you choose the correct option okay so this is why first thing that you should do when you see a data table is look at the heading of the table and understand what is the table telling us after that you move on to the rows and the columns so it was a food grain production in a country now this production can be divided on the basis of different things let's say for example we know that in a country there are different kinds of soils okay so it could be on the basis of soil let's say if there is red alluvial soil somewhere so here so many grains were produced in this year of somewhere else there is dry soil so over here these many grains of uh, food were produced that is one way of doing it the other way is depending on month because it's food grains production in a country you can have month month wise data let's say instead of state wise it was month wise in january 45 lakh tons of rice were produced that is also possible now the food grains if we move on to the columns you see there are there's rice wheat jowar pulses and others so now this others obviously there are many other food grains so usually what we see in a data table is when there is such a huge number of data points then we tend to club the smaller data points into one single data point that is exactly what they have done here because as you can see let's say for example in state s rice was 41 wheat was 37 jowar 59 pulses 21 and all the other food grains together they could only account for 15 lakh tons which is so less compared to all the others right so this is why we club the data this is exactly what the data table is telling us so if i ask you how much of jowar was produced in state u in 1999 we will say 12 lakh tons okay that is how you read the table now based on this table you will be asked some questions you have to study this table just like i taught you right now and then you have to answer the questions so let's see what kind of questions they ask which state had the highest grain production so they haven't specified which grain in this case so this means that we have to see the total one the total grain production we have to see is highest in which state so for this as you can see there is no column for total many a times in the examination if you are very nervous if you don't read the table properly and you know what people do they just see that last column others have 
they don't read the word others they just assume ki last column will always be total but many times they don't total it up so you have to be sure that you are reading the question very properly so you have to total it of course in an mcq based exam you have just four options to choose from but here we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we have information for eight states so of course we will not sit and calculate the total for all eight states these are the small tricks the small things which you have to keep in mind because all examinations are time bound you do not have the entire day to sit and calculate everything you have to be quick you have to be smart and you have to be accurate so the, the four states that we will calculate for will be p q r and s so let's see for p what will the total come it will be 45 103 27 and 29 which gives which gives 204 similarly for q it will be 241 for r it will be 203 and for s it will be 170 for t u v and w we do not require to calculate it so out of this we can see that q is the highest so a part 2 is the answer right very easy nothing much the next one is a ratio based question now ratios are a very common measure that is asked in data analysis questions here they haven't mentioned the word ratio but any time you face this word two two implies ratio that you have to calculate a ratio and the answer will be in the form of a ratio now in a ratio there are two sides over here you can see but on both sides of the semicolon there are two numbers so what was the production of rice production this will be proportion proportion and ratio are more or less the same things in technical words there is a certain difference but in common language we use tend to use ratio and proportion simultaneously so what was the proportion of rice production to wheat production in the country so as soon as you see this word two this two translates into a semicolon so rice production will come on this side and wheat production will go on the other side so rice production is how much in the country we have to total because all the states will be included in this case so we have to total the rice column and we have to total the wheat column after totaling we'll get the rice column as 393 and the wheat column will come to 331 So what will the answer be? Simply three ninety three to three thirty one. Here we can see that there is no scope for reducing the terms. Otherwise, had it been let's say three hundred to sixty, just a hypothetical example, then you can reduce this. What will the answer be? Five is to one. Ratios are always given in the lowest terms, so. Here there is no scope for reduction, but in this case there was. You have to give your answer in the lowest term. But of course, for all of you, it's MCQ based, so this is not going to be an issue. You will always have the option in whatever form they wanted to. So over here we get the answer as B part three. The only important thing to keep in mind for ratio is which side will you put what value. So the first one will be on the left side, and the next one will be on the right side. Two will translate into a colon. Moving on to the next one, Jawar was the most important food chain in the states. So now this one is a little tricky. This one is a little tricky because in a hurry, if you read it, most of you will think that this is asking you for which state produced the highest amount of Jawar, right? Because most important food grain. we translate most important into jitna production zyada hua but your most important food grain jawar in which state which means you have to check the relative importance it might so happen for example if you would have thought that the most important food grain will be in the state which produced the most amount of jawar okay so which state produced most amount of jawar q 
क्यू क्यू प्रोड्यूस सेवेंटी थ्री लैक टन्स विच इज द हाइस्ट अमंग ऑल सो योर आंसर वुड बी क्यू विच इज ऑप्शन टू बट दिस इज रॉन्ग बाय यू हैव टू सी कंपेर्ड टू द अदर ग्रेन्स द जवार प्रोडक्शन वॉज हायर इन दो स्टेट्स ओनली दट इट विल बी मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट विच मीन्स दैट कंपेर्ड यू आर नॉट प्रोड्यूसिंग सो मच ऑफ द अदर ग्रेन्स as much as you are producing jowar it may ha- may so happen that you are producing a l- very little amount in all but jowar is the highest out of that also so which means that you are placing importance on jowar so where all is this case it can't be p because p didn't produce jowar at all q highest was wheat which means wheat was the most important in q in r the highest was jowar which means for r jowar was the most important food grain so this one we will consider r is one state s may the highest was again jowar which is 59 t once again highest is 41 so r s t u the highest was rice which means they give most importance to rice jowar they just produce 12 lakh but they produce 68 lakh tons of rice in v again rice was the most important and in w the most important uh, you cannot say exactly why because in this others it might so happen just one was 39 and the remaining 6 lakh tons for some other in that case the 39 one will become most important so here you cannot say exactly which one was the most important so our final answer is r s and t which is option number 4 here yeah. the last part 4 state p alone accounted for approximately what percentage of wheat production in the country so how will we do this this is a very simple question we have to check for state p what percentage of wheat production which means we total up the wheat column which we have already done for the second question and then what do you take in the numerator of course for percentage it's always numerator by denominator and then in 200 so that you get it in the form of a percentage and not a decimal so the numerator here will be <coughs> wheat production in p by wheat production in entire country and in 200 so what does that give us in p there was 103 lakh tons 103 by total is 331 200 which gives us 31% the closest answer to 31 is 30% so 30% is our option b part 4 the last one for this again a little complicated it is not tricky it is not difficult but you have to perform certain calculations so if the average per hectare yield of rice average per hectare yield of rice meaning that on an average one hectare may you can produce 30 tons of rice so in one hectare hectare sorry you produce 30 tons then the area approx under rice cultivation during the year was which means during the year how much rice was produced 393 lakh tons 390 lakh tons were produced so if 30 tons can be produced in 1 hectare then 393 lakh tons can be produced in how many hectares simple unitary method sum correct nothing very difficult in this you just have to understand what they are saying so how will we get this 393 by 30 which is 13.1 lakh hectare hectare so they've given us that the options are already in lakh hectares and they are already approximated that's why we will choose the third option 13 clear
so this is all about data tables now some other things to keep in mind about data tables when you do the other sums is increase or decrease it might so happen that they ask you for the increase or decrease over a period of time what will the formula be usually this will be in terms of a percentage so there will of course be an into 100 a numerator and a denominator in the numerator or denominator you will write in absolute terms what is the increase or decrease if it's a decrease then it will be in a minus number probably or you have to write 5% decrease or minus 5% both mean the same thing in absolute terms you will write the increase or decrease and in the denominator you will take the base here right so for example I am just taking a hypothetical example to explain this to you if I give you that in 2007 there were 100 students and in 2008 there are 90 students so you can see that 10 students have decreased over 2007 right so if I ask you what is the percentage change in the number of students over 2007 to 2008 it means that I am seeing from 2007 which means my base year is 2007 what is my increase or decrease in absolute terms it is minus 10 or a 10 de decrease of 10 either way you can write and the denominator will be base year amount which is 100 in this case because our base year is 2007 and then into 100 so this comes to a 10 percent decrease or minus 10 percent change clear so this is one very important thing another important thing while reading the data table a common thing which examiners do is let's say they give you a data table where they have shown revenue okay so they have given you revenue for different years let's say 2001 2003 4 and 5 for five years they have given you the revenue for product A let's, let's take just one product for now right this is the data given to you now the question asked is in which year was the highest growth seen so what's the question year of highest growth in a hurry what will we think 30 1005 mein 30 hua 30 lakhs ka sale so that's why the answer we'll give as 2005 is completely wrong because what are they asking they are asking us the year of highest growth not the year of highest revenue so for year of highest growth we have to see year on year growth which means over here what is the growth it's grown 10 by basis again 10 into 100 which means there is a hundred percent growth in this case there is a decrease which means anyway this can't happen it was a decrease so there was no growth it became worse from 15 to 25 15 to 25 what was the absolute increase absolute increase was 10 and the base is 15 so 10 by 15 in 200 gives us 66.67% 
and from 2004 to 2005 5 by 25 which is a 20% so what will the answer be in 2002 we saw the highest growth because there was a full 100% growth in 2002 even though in 2005 we recorded the highest amount of sales or revenue okay so this is again a very important thing that we have to keep in mind when facing data table questions in fact <coughs> not just data table in many data analysis questions as a whole we face this problem I hope data table is clear to all of you the next one we move on to is pie charts so now pie charts what are pie charts from the name itself it's like a pie which means it's circular all of you must have seen what a pie looks like it's basically a circular dish and then it's cut into slices just like a pizza it is cut into slices okay. so that is also what a pie chart exactly is but what's the difference in a pie usually if you're cutting a pie then you cut it into equal parts so that everyone gets as much however let's say if you are going for a promotion party from for a promotional party or a special party then of course the guest of honor will get more pie if you are cutting it in front of them you'll try to give them a bigger piece because they have achieved something so let's say we remove this line and we say that because that person if the party is in their honor we give them a bigger part of the pie and let's say there is a someone who is a little health conscious so they don't want to have much of the pie you will cut a smaller slice for them and then let's say the rest of it divide equally among whoever else is there in the party correct so what happened now the pie is not divided into equal parts however it still remains a pie which is divided into different parts what is the shape of the pie it is a circle now in a circle all of us have studied in our school level that the angle around the center is 360 degree which is called the central angle it's the central angle which is 360 degrees which means that this entire thing will make an angle of 360 all right if we are dividing it into different portions so this portion which you gave to the guest of honor it is a bigger portion so out of the 360 degrees let's say it covered 120 degrees okay this health conscious person they took a small slice let's say they just took 20 degrees so what are we left with 360 minus 140 which is 220 degrees now this 220 degrees let's say only um, 220 degrees are left now these 220 degree let's say you have four of you one two three four four of them are there so all of you will get equal equal how much will you get 55 each this is 55 this is 55 and for also 5 <coughs> okay so that is how you divided the pie this is exactly what we do in data interpretation for pie charts we use data where the data is showing the breakup of something so let's say for a company if they have a total sales of 20 lakhs if they have a total sales of 20 lakhs they will want to see what product is making how much sales what proportion of sales is covered by which product so let's say they deal in four products product a and d a is the most selling highest selling product so a accounts for let's say 50 percent of the entire sales b accounts for 25 percent E accounts for 20% and D accounts for 5%. So what will the pie chart look like? The pie chart represents the whole. Here is the center. We start with A. 
तो ए कवर्स दिस इंटायर पोर्शन बिकॉज इट अकाउंट्स फॉर फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द सेल्स बी इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट तो विच मीन्स दिस इज बी ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट सी इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट सॉरी पाए चार फिफ्टी परसेंट गोज टू ए This twenty-five percent goes to B, and the remaining twenty-five is broken up between C and D at twenty percent and five percent. Here, that is what a pie chart represents. Now, this is in terms of percentage. Always, the percentage will add up to hundred because it is showing as a whole. Out of a whole, how much is A accounting for? so one way of representing a pie chart is percentage the other way of presenting a pie chart is in degrees okay these are the two main types or main ways of presenting a pie chart and we will be doing sums on both ways because both can come in your examination and you have to be sure if it's in terms of degrees you can how will you check if everything if the data is correct or not you will add up all the degrees all should add up to 360 degrees if the information is given in terms of percentage then what will you do you will again add up and how much should it come to 100% right <coughs> be very careful in the exam whether the data is given in percentage or in degrees because then you will have to do your calculations accordingly okay so because suppose in this question in this example if i ask you how much was sale of c so how will you calculate that you know it is 20% just by looking at the pie chart you don't have to see this information anymore it has been presented in the form of a pie chart and you know that the total sales was 20 lakhs so how will you find out sale for c it is 20% of 20 lakhs which means 20 by 100 into 20 Just four lakhs, right? Let's say in this case, it was a pie which you were distributing among people. You want to know how many calories of pie did you have? So I told you that the entire pie is for thousand calories. The entire pie, uh, pie contained thousand calories. You want to see how many calories did you consume? You were one of the remaining people. so you consumed 55 degrees out of 360 degrees you consume 55 degrees out of 360 degree this gives you the proportion which you consume and what will you multiply it with with the total number of calories this will give you 55 by 360 in 2000 which is approximately 150 calories Here, so that is how the difference in working arises, depending on whether the pie chart is presented in the form of degrees or in the form of percentage. So let's do a sum on this. Come to sum number The pie chart given below shows the marks obtained by a student in an examination. If the total marks obtained by him in the examination were five forty, answer the questions given below based on this pie chart. So here it's given that all the data is in degrees. So make sure that you don't think that these all of these are percentages. They're all right. In which subject did the student obtain hundred and five marks? how will we calculate this we we don't know mark wise distribution of the student we know degree wise distribution so how do we change it we want 105 out of 540 540 was the total marks and we want to see in which subject he got 105 so 105 by 
and what do we multiply it with? We multiply it with 360 degrees because 360 degrees is the whole. We want 105 parts out of 540 parts and what are we dividing? We are dividing 360 degrees into 540 parts. So this will come to 70 percent I think and 5 by 540. 70 percent. Sorry 70 degrees. It will come to 70 degrees. Which subject is 70 degrees? Hindi. So we have our answer as Hindi. In a similar way, what is the marks obtained in science? So now here you have to do, do the opposite calculation. So how do you know marks obtained in science? Science was 80 degrees out of 360 degrees. And what is the total? It is 540. So we do 80 by 360 to 540, which is 120 marks. Right? How many more marks were obtained by the student in maths than those in Hindi? So how do we do this one? This is a little different from the other two. How many more marks were obtained by the student in maths than those in Hindi? So first we can see from the pie chart the difference in degrees. In maths the student got 90 degrees and in Hindi he got 70 degrees. So how much more did he get in maths? He got 20 degrees more out of 360 degrees. Now 20 degrees is in degree terms. We need it in marks terms. So we will convert it by dividing 360 and multiplying 540. So you can see this one, the first one was marks to degree. Second one was from degree to marks. And here again we are doing degree to marks. So 20 by 360 into 540. What will it give us? It gives us 30 marks. We have part 1 as the answer. Very easy. How many more marks were obtained by the student in science and maths together? So now here what will we do? We will add science and maths is 170 degree. 80 plus 90 which is 170 degrees we have to find out. The marks corresponding to 170 degrees. Which gives us 255 marks. Part 2. Clear? The last one. How many more marks were obtained by those students in science than those in English? This one is the same as the third one. What do we have to do? We have to subtract the degrees for science and English. English is 55, science is 80. Which means... This gives us 25 degrees, correct? So 25 degrees out of 360 and total is 540. So this gives us 37.5. Option 1. Clear? Now this was a sum using degrees. Now we will do a sum using percentage. Very similar sum. I will just show you a part of it. One important thing. How to go from percentage to degree. So I told you that this entire thing is 360 degrees which is angle around the circle. However for converting it into percentage or for one particular sector. This is one sector. One slice of the pie is called one sector. So for one sector, how do you find out the angle? That angle is called central angle of the sector. Central angle of the circle is 360 and central angle of the sector is the division wise angle. So for example over here, 120, 20, 55, these were all central angles of the sector. Another important thing in this question This question shows the number of students failed. Okay. So here the central angle of the sector 
for the students who failed in mathematics how do we find this for mathematics what is the percentage mathematics is the 30% percent one mathematics is the 30% percent one so that will be 30 by 100 into 360 because here what are we doing we are going from percentage to degrees so this is the percentage and this is the degree the answer will come to 108 degrees okay this is the only thing required in this sum the others are all simple questions which can be attempted by yourself also as practice okay one more thing is 21a also i want to show you all once the number of students failed in science is less than the number of students failed in all other subjects by so here what do we do again we have to see the difference right so number of students who failed in science is 32 percent this is evident so in science 32 percent failed and in the other subjects how many did failed of course those who failed in science is one and the others failed in the other subjects because this pie chart only shows data of the students who failed so which means in other subjects 68 percent failed number of students failed in science is less than the number of students failed in all other subjects by so we need the difference between 68 and 32 which gives us 36 percent but we need the data in terms of number of students so 36 percent of the total number of students total number of students is 500 so 36 percent of 500 gives us 180 so 180 is option number three clear so that's pie chart one more question using amounts for pie chart is for now number 13 again is a very good question let's see percentage expenses on various items during book production and sale so here we are talking about a company dealing in producing books and selling them this is binding and cutting charges, advertisement charges, printing cost, paper cost, miscellaneous expenses and royalty. These are the different expenses that are incurred in the process of book production and selling. The data is given in terms of percentage as we all can see. The first question, central angle for sector on paper cost. How do we calculate this? Central angle for sector on paper cost is the same as the one we just did. We have to see that 10% is paper cost, so we calculate 10% of 360 degrees. So how much is 10% of 360 degrees? 36 degrees, very simple. Again, we are just converting percentage to degrees. 36 degrees. If the printing cost is 17,500, then royalty paid is. Now this is the question which is I, which is what I wanted to discuss. Here they haven't given you the total expenses anywhere. In the example I had show, given you the total expenses. What have they given you? They have given you one part of the expenses. They have said that only the printing cost which is what? Printing cost accounted for only 35% of the total expenses. 17,500 is actually 35% of total and what do we need we need royalty and royalty was 15 percent so what do we do first of all from this we can find out what was the total expenses if 17,500 is 35 percent then what is 100 percent very simple 17,500 by 35 percent which is rupees 50,000 and from that we need only 15% because the answer asked is only royalty. So royalty equal to 
of 50,000 which is rupees 7500 easy if the miscellaneous expenses are rupees 6000 how much more are the binding and cutting charges than royalty so now what do we do make sure that every part you treat as a different part okay your don't consider royalty the same as this question here the amounts are changing so you have to do a recalculation the miscellaneous expenses were four percent so total expenses is six thousand by four percent which is equal to six thousand by point four total expenses is fifteen thousand binding and cutting now a simple thing to do in this case is first we can find out the difference of binding and cutting and royalty in terms of a percentage the binding and cutting is 18 royalty is 15 which means there is a 3% difference so our final answer will only be 3% of the total amount you don't have to calculate binding separately royalty separately and then subtract it it is a correct way of doing it but as I said in this section what matters is your speed and accuracy okay so we just consider 3% of 15,000 which is is 4500 here fourth one the central angle corresponding to the sector on printing cost is more than that of advertisement charges by once again first we will see the difference in percentage terms and just the difference we will convert into degrees the other way was that first you calculate central angle which means degrees for printing cost then you calculate degree for advertisement charges and then you subtract both the degrees instead what I am telling you to do is subtract the percentages first and then just find out the degrees for the difference so what were the two charges printing and advertisement so printing is 35 advertisement is 18 so 35 minus 18 17 percent so we need the degrees for 17 percent how do we do that 17 by 100 into 100. gives us 61 point degrees last one the paper cost is approximately what percent of printing cost now this one you have to be a little careful because the data is already in terms of percentage and you are being asked to calculate a percentage of the percentage so how do we do that it is paper cost and printing cost so paper cost is 10 percent printing cost is 35 percent so paper cost will be on top 10 percent out of 35 percent first understanding let's say total cost was x so numerator would be 10% of x and denominator will be 35% of x 100 this is what will happen so this x and x will get cut the percentages will get cut we will be left with 10 into 100 by 35 which gives us 28.57% is 28.6 percent here yeah. so that's that i hope pie chart is clear to all of you this covers 99.9 percent .9 of the kind of sums that you all can face in pie charts one question which i want all of you to try with me is a mixed one where they have included a data table as well as a pie chart so it might look a little intimidating but it is very easy they just give such questions at a more advanced level to trick you a little so let's see what the question says degree wise distribution of employees working in various departments of an organization and the ratio of number of men to number of women is given respective ratio of so this is the pie chart which shows department wise and this is the data table which is showing ratio wise 
ratio of gender wise and department so one important thing is you have to understand that all these are actually ratios okay and this is not absolute number it is just ratios so while working we have to keep this in mind so let's see the first one is and they have also given us total number of employees as 3250 so let's say if i ask you total number of employees working in marketing department how will we calculate 79.2 by 360 into 3250 right what are we doing we are converting degrees to number so that's how that's what you will do and acha theek hai let's see the questions we'll come to the next part later number of men working in the marketing department so first you see how many people are working in the marketing department what is that 79.2 by 360 into 3250 this is for marketing department but what do we need we need only the men this includes both men and women so how do we consider only the men you take into account this table the so marketing department the ratio between men to women is 3 is to 2 which means that for every two women there are three men so if in total how do we deal with ratios 3 is to 2 means that 3 fifth are men and 2 fifth are women that's what a ratio signifies so out of this total 3 fifth will be the men so if you solve this what will we get we'll get our final answer as 429 so there are 429 men working in the marketing department and how many are women let's see 79.2 by 360 into 3250 this bracket comes to 715 so number of women will be 759 715 minus 429 which is 286 this wasn't required but just for understanding i made you do this next what is the ratio of number of women working in hr department to number of men working in it department so here what we did in the first part we have to do that twice once for women hr department and then for men it department and then we after we find out the two numbers we will calculate the ratio so women in hr department how will we find out HR department is thirty six by three sixty degrees out of total number of employees three two five zero, and we want the women. So HR department mein women will be thirteen by twenty five, and men will be twelve by twenty five because the ratio is twelve is to thirteen. So for women, what will we do into thirteen by twenty five? what will this give us this this will give us 169 for the men in it department it department mein we have 57.6 degrees by 50 and the ratio in it department is 7 is to 3 which means 7 by 10 and 3 by 10 so we need the men in it department which means 7 by 10 how much will this give us this gives us the final ratio will be first on the left hand side we will write women of hr department 169 right hand side we will give men in it department we can see that this will get reduced so after reducing it we will get 13 is to 28 clear The number of men working in the production department of the organization is what percent of the total number of employees working in that department? So we are talking about the production department's men, and we have to compare that with total number of employees of that department. So first, we'll calculate total number of employees in production department. What is that? One thirty-six point eight degrees by three sixty into three two five zero. how much will that give us that will give us 1 2 3 5 so this is total number of people in the production department now we have to see the number of men out of this so out of 1 2 3 5 in the production department ratio is 4 is to 
so four fifth of the people are men this will give us 988 now we have to compare these two which means we have to calculate a percentage of men out of total number of employees in production department this gives us 80 percent here which is option number three the last one number of women working in it department is what percent of total number of employees in the organization from all the departments so this denominator we already know is 3250 because it talks about total number of employees of the organization which means there is no need for calculating a department wise thing it is out of all so out of all it is 3250 which is the denominator now the numerator is women of it department so it department 57.6 by 360 Same thing. Total is three five zero, and women के लिए we will take the ratio seven by ten and five uh, seven by ten and three by ten, which means we will multiply this with three by ten, and what will the denominator be? It will be three two five zero. Clear? We will reduce this, and we will get the answer as. Four point eight percent. Yeah. So this covers the entire portion on data tables and pie charts. I hope all of this is clear to you. There are ample number of practice questions on these two topics, and the kind of questions are all similar to the ones we have done in class today. So please practice those questions and make sure that you are able to solve them. what you have to focus on data interpretation is always one of the most scoring parts in any paper any entrance exam data interpretation is one of the most scoring parts so you have to concentrate on speed on accuracy and on presence of mind because you have to be very sure that you are reading the question properly and then solving it so thank you all of you happy learning